Yeah, thanks, uh, Andreas and Thomas and Axel and everybody else who's involved in this. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. It's very early in the morning here, uh, but uh, I want to make sure that, fortunately, and I think, ah, oh, here we go. Okay. How's that? Is that? Can you see that now? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, good. Uh, so, uh, uh, again, my name is, my, as Andres was saying, my name is Mike Doan. I work uh, as a, a taxonomist, also a lecturer, University of Washington graduate program in information science. Uh, if you don't know where Seattle is, I'm sure most of or all of you do. A reminder that I'm way up in the northwest part of the United States. And fortunately, there's one or two coffee places here in Seattle, so I'm taking advantage of some lots of coffee this morning. But what I want to talk to you about today is... Uh, using uh, a, a project that we worked on with a few graduate students uh, last year, which turned into a project that we are now starting up at a financial institution here in Seattle of a tool that we are calling SIRS, S-I-R-R-S, -R -R and that's a Semantic Information Retrieval and Relationship System. It's a two-part tool that uh, does ontology um, extraction and also does uh, works with performs the ETL process, extract, transform, and load process that we uh, uh, have experimented on and are now moving forward with, with regard to using large amounts of data, otherwise known as big data, to use the marketing phrase. A and what we're finding is uh, we're starting to build some success with this tool. It's a proprietary tool owned by the University of Washington and uh, two other inventors. It was there was a provisional uh, patent filed in the US last April for this tool and so uh, we are building it inside of a company right now both with uh, some current graduate students in information science at, from the university and with some folks that are uh, professional taxonomists uh, but it's inside of this company this company is a, uh, a financial it's not based in Seattle but their offices are in Seattle it's a financial management company they manage um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 33, 34 trillion dollars with the T trillion. It's a, a massive financial, uh, globally uh, located financial management company. And what uh, their, their challenge is, and the reason we connected with them for this project, was that they spend uh, a lot of time, these large companies do, uh, with massive amounts of data uh, in, in the process of cleansing it uh, or preparing it, uh, data engineers spend a lot of time manually preparing data uh, that then is handed over to a data analyst, a very highly paid uh, professional for these companies who have typically been with the company or in the field more than 10 years, who have a lot of experience, and these data analysts then write a lot of queries for this data to extract out the information that they need. The, the challenge is that uh, these companies spend a lot of time and a lot of money manually extracting information uh, from this data that they then, again, push on to these data analysts. And what we were brought in to do and, and what SIRS begins to solve, it certainly has not solved it yet, and we're still working on it, but we're making some headway, is that it uses a, a company's ontology, and we've used, of course, Pool Party to do this. Uh, we build the ontology and then combine it with our extraction tool such that uh, this tool, SIRS, uh, goes in and does a what you could call a pre-analysis of the data. Uh, in, instead of having to do a human do this, uh, SIRS does it instead. And the, the challenge, of course, is that, you know, this is still new and we're still dealing with large amounts of data. But uh, the financial company in question said that typically it takes them six to eight weeks or nearly two months on average to thoroughly cleanse uh, new data that come in uh, such that it could be used by these data analysts to write queries to find out the information that they want. And they said that simply this is too long. It's too long. It's too manual. It's a very arduous process in which there are many starts and stops. Uh, and that by the time the data get to the data analyst who actually can use it to process you know, these queries that they want to run on it, uh, it, it's too long. And the market is moving too fast for this to take place. However, there really is no 
uh, solution that they have found uh, so far other than manually processing this data. And when I say that, I mean data engineers are going in and, and, uh, and say, for example, if they get a new set of data in from a source, say in Australia, they will analyze that data, process it, normalize it, and then make it available to the data analysts to run queries upon. But the, again, that takes, according to them, that takes a, lo a long time to do this, and that's costing them uh, market presence. Even though they manage trillions of dollars, U.S. dollars, they still uh, feel that they do not have a competitive advantage, and that they also have to hire too many people. On average, a data engineer in the U.S. what's what what we call a fully loaded cost, and that means. Uh, salary, benefits, you know, space in a building, etc., runs nearly $250,000. So per person, it costs about a quarter of a million dollars per year to have a data analyst uh, sitting and manually an processing this data. And our challenge from the institution was, look, if you can make your SERS engine work uh, more effectively and eliminate the need for, for hiring, you know, two to three analysts, we will, you know, give you a, a nice sum of money to do this, and it's it, it also the fact that it would be a lot quicker. They could potentially again make make more money. So their bottom line was: look, if SIRS can do this sort of pre-data, pre sorry, this data pre-analysis and cleanse the data prior to it being handed over to a data. Uh, data analyst, even if it's only 60, 70, 80 percent of the way there it's still cheaper and faster than having someone do it manually. And so their goal, bottom line here, literally, is that they want this data within days, not weeks. And so that was the, that was the goal of SERS when we set out. And what we've done is, is to combine, and I'll show you a, a graph later, not all this text, uh, is to combine a, an ontology that we have built. We started with some standards, financial standards in the U.S. We've got FIBO, F-I-B-O. And that's a start, but we had to modify it greatly uh, for use inside of this company, of course. As Andreas mentioned, it's fairly common to do this. Uh, we had some graduate students working on this uh, for free as part of their thesis project, of course. But we've also got some professional taxonomists working on it now. And uh, that, that's fine. That's typical. You need that. And that basically starts to mimic or even in some cases replace uh, the knowledge of, for example, a data engineer who would be doing pretty much the same thing. And then the extraction module. The extraction module is proprietary and inside of the SERS engine, and that's what we have built. <clears throat> We've had two technologists working on that, and both of whom have graduated and moved on to Microsoft uh, here in the Seattle area. Uh, and But we built the extraction module such that it would extract uh, data from new data sources and then compare it to the ontology for the company that we built looking for key concepts. Those key concepts could then be mapped to phrases or to terms themselves and that is what uh, is the sort of I guess you could say the cleansing process in that instead of having a human do this over and over again SIRS would come in and do the extraction uh, looking for key concepts and ideas in the new data based on the ontology that we had already built in Pool Party for the customer. And the idea here is that uh, we could turn the SERS uh, extractor loose on the data. It could analyze it. And it's not analyzing it based on, on just random keywords or just keywords that, like, say, you would do for a search engine. Instead, it's looking for key concepts that the company uses over and over again in its data analytics, and that's what's producing, in the end, uh, the, the ability for data analysts to go query that data. So our goals, again, simple, are, are faster data retrieval. Uh, and again, the, the idea here is that with uh, large amounts of data coming in nearly daily, uh, the company is having to hire more and more people to do this, and that's not what they want. Obviously, at, at a quarter million dollars a person, that's an expensive proposition. The other idea is that w having an ontology uh, enables uh, the data analyst to discover ideas, concepts, relations that they otherwise might not have known. 
Now, data engineers typically in this company, like I said, have at least 10 years of experience in the field, so they're very smart to begin with. Uh, but oftentimes, when you bring in data from different sources, it's, doesn't, it's not standardized, nor does it have a standardized naming convention to use, and that can lead to some trouble, not a lot, but some. So with the ontology in place, however, as Andreas and others have pointed out today, you can do some mapping of concept to concept that you couldn't do before, and then they could, using Sparkle queries and other things, be able to find this data uh, from new sources that they didn't necessarily could uh, think of from before. So the idea with SIRS was to enable this faster retrieval, uh, use ontology to assist with data re recovery of knowledge, and then uh, generate this user interface that the uh, data analysts could use inside of this company to write the queries and find the information that they want. Uh, so this has been tried many, many times. Uh, we are not the first ones to try to do this. It is, it is, it has uh, doing this kind of work, automating or enhancing ETL, has a long history. Uh, unfortunately, most of it is fraught with uh, failures, and certainly weren't. We cannot claim success yet, uh, but we're making small steps in that direction. One thing we did find in our research was that using an ontology, especially an ontology that's built into a piece of software that can go extract entities automatically, has, has, hasn't been tried that much because, quite frankly, the software, like a pool party or others, ha hasn't been out there commercially available to do it. There are some academic ontology tools out there, somewhat difficult to use, that we have found, that was our opinion, uh, but making ETL faster has been sort of this dream and yet it hasn't come to fruition despite many trials. And again, we're in the process of doing this uh, within the company, building this out as a proprietary tool, but uh, the goal simply is that we want to basically make the extract part of the ETL uh, more enhanced with a company's own internal uh, ontology, and that's kind of the key here is it has to be an internal. Uh, so again, we want to also reduce the, reduce the need to hire new uh, new engineers to analyze this data. Why ontologies? This is, I mean, it's nothing new to anybody out there who's listening right now, of course, but to customers like large financial companies, ontologies aren't necessarily something they really understand yet. Uh, we used an existing business domain te technology, ontologies, like I said, based on FIBO in the U.S. here. We had to, of course, modify it for internal use, and we're doing that right now, uh, today. <laughs> going to uh, do more modifications on that, uh, but once it's clear to customers that an ontology can be used to do this mapping so far beyond, say, a taxonomy, uh, it starts to make sense to them, and the customers at this institution we're working with uh, almost immediately recognize the power of an ontology to, to mimic, not replace, and to mimic you know, the knowledge that already exists inside the heads of these data analysts who, again, are the, the folks with 10 plus years of experience who we are relying on, by the way, to modify the ontology. So the question then is why, you know, why SIRS, why this model, why this tool? It really is sort of a, a tool that we're building there. Uh, it it, it uh, acts as a, a, a semantic, if you will, a logical layer between users who want to uh, query data and the actual uh, amount of data that is, you know, is, is huge and growing bigger every day. Uh, the key here is that the SERS access is intermediary. It uh, helps to focus uh, a query down to relevant data inside of ma this massive storage, and we're talking about exabytes of, of information, uh, and, and it helps to uh, clarify that for these data analysts who just want to query the data but don't want to wait six to eight weeks for it to be prepared for them to use. I know I'm going fast here, and we can certainly ask, you know, ask questions later, but we've kind of come up with this model, and then this might take a couple of minutes to explain, but the idea is, is fairly simple that a lot of data, social media sensors from the enterprise, real-time feeds, now this is all internal. Uh, this is not, does not reach out to the webs yet, but it's the so social media within the company, uh, data within the company, all go through into SIRS, which is in the middle there, which is basically an extraction module that is based on an ontology that we've created. 
uh, Pool Party provides the the uh, the tool, so to speak, that runs uh, all the ontology parts of this. Uh, it can go out to the interface, which again is internally facing, so this does not have to present to the public. This only presents to employees, a very in fact a very specific set of employees within this company who use it, a and then eventually the goal would be to connect it to outside partners and collaborators. That has that's maybe a year away from us work, getting that fixed or worked out. Uh, but in, it, internally, what we're looking at here is extracting data from multiple sources. Right now, we're only concentrating mainly on the enterprise systems because that's the easy, quote, the easiest one to, to do. But a SERS, what SERS does basically is extracts that information, uh, run, if you want to say it this way, runs it through the ontology to determine what uh, keywords, phrases, concepts are relevant to these data analysts who use the interface and Pool Party manages it in internally uh, once we built the taxonomies out and then started to build out the ontologies Pool Party is acting as the, uh, the, t the tool that we're using to do the ontology and uh, you know the proprietary part of this of course is that extraction modules integration to the extraction ontology and that's what the university and my company are working with right now to build out. Uh, but the initial test that we ran for the um, the students who did their uh, master's thesis project on SERS, the initial prototype we built out did work, uh, limited way of course, it's, it's not there yet, but it's in a limited way, it was able to uh, read through uh, many terabytes of information and then determine what was relevant to uh, the end user. In this case, it was a again a financial analyst, and uh, based on some queries, initial queries that we ran through the interface we designed, which again was very simple, uh, we were able to determine that it the ontology-based ETL uh, was more effective than a just a standard uh, having having a data engineer go through and manually extract all this information. So it's a small step forward. Uh, but right now, what we're looking at is uh, the ability to do things we couldn't do before. The financial company is very interested in it because, of course, they don't want to keep hiring more and more data engineers and do this manually. They want to make it more automated, and that's what SERS is meant to do. So I know that we're running out of time, and I wanted to say that that's kind of the basically the idea of where we're at. Uh, this is who I, I forgot to put my email on there, but, uh, you know, if you just... Um, my that's my university address is uh, it's very simple M as in Mike T is in Tom D is in Don at U W which is U W University of Washington dot edu M T D at U W dot edu and you can get a hold of me. I wanted to leave you with this picture because that's kind of where we're at right now and and our job right now is to build this middle part using uh, pool party. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Mike, for this brilliant talk. Are there any questions here? Is already available? One, one second, please. Otherwise, I think Mike doesn't hear you. I cannot hear it. Yeah, sorry, Andre. Is SERS already available? And if so, how? And how? Uh, no, so, yeah, right now, SERS is not available. Uh, it's still in a, we're making the, building the prototype within this company. Uh, I think that this year, uh, 2015, SERS will uh, be available for use outside of this company. We are focusing on financial institutions first because they have an immediate need. And so for other financial institutions, this should be available uh, 2015 this year, later. Uh, for other, inst other verticals, say maybe... Um, we are also looking at this for commercial real estate, uh, perhaps later this year. But SERS will be out of uh, prototype stage in 2015. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, Mike, thank you very much. Have a good day. Yeah, thank you very much. And we will put the recording.